Hello and welcome to Art and Self. I'm Cindy Ingram, your host and the founder of Art Class Curator, the Curated Connections Library, and the Art and Self Connection Circle. This is a podcast where we experience the range and depth of what it means to be human, seen through our connections and conversations about works of art. These art conversations are here to show you that art is here for you as a catalyst, a challenger, a coach, and a comfort. Before we get started, take a moment to fill up your lungs with a deep breath. Connect with your body and your mind and your spirit and get ready to discover what art has to show you. Hello, this is Cindy. And today I have a different type of episode for you. Um, I will explain it um, once I get into it. But the, just to let you know, this was recorded on Facebook as a Facebook Live. And I plan on doing these weekly updates about my 2023 word of the year, which is artist. And each week I will give a little bit of a update, what I'm thinking about, how I'm looking at my work and my life through the the term artist and how that word is impacting me. So this episode is kind of explaining that overall process. And then you will still have your interview episodes where we talk about the works of art. So I will just add these word of the year updates into the rotation. And so there will be two new podcasts every week, um, as long as I keep up with my (laughs) word of the year updates. And um, I don't have an interview for you this week because I am, as I explained, I will explain in the video as I'm getting over COVID and I just had to reschedule all of my interviews um, because I just didn't feel up to that level of conversation when my energy level is so low and my voice is kind of hard to um, control and manage (laughs) and um, predict how it's going to be. So anyway, without further ado, here is my first word of the year update for 2023. Enjoy. Hello, this is Cindy Ingram, and I am just double checking that my live video is working on Facebook. Yes, it is. I am um, really happy that I have created a new word of the year. And I do that every year. Um, But the one that I have for this year is sort of extra um, special for me, extra inspirational, and I am really wanting to stay engaged with my word of the year because in the past I have kind of faltered a, a little bit on that. Um, and by the end of the year, it's like I've kind of forgotten about it. And so I thought what I would do was come on and do a an update every every week. And I will also be posting these to the Art and Self podcast. So if you are um, subscribe to Art and Self with Cindy Ingram, you also can listen to these there, Uh, but I'll be posting them on Facebook as well. And so I'm just making sure that it's working. It is. Okay. Um, I got an error, but still managed to be working. So that's good. All right. So my word of the year this year is artist. And I have so much baggage around this word. And I kind of want to share the, the baggage that I have and how I ended up choosing this as my word and then some of the reflections that I've already made so far because I'm starting the year I'm starting these updates a little bit late um not with the new year because I ended up um I was traveling to Universal Studios and then I ended up with COVID and then my um husband had COVID and then my children have COVID and they all still do I'm still testing positive and we'll see how how far I can get through this without having to take cough breaks but I think I'm okay I I, um I am, you know, you might hear it in my voice if you're used to hearing me. I, uh, the more I talk, the more I'll kind of start to sound weird, but I'm going to do it anyway and see how we do. Uh, see if I don't get out of breath from talking too, because that is a, a thing I've been dealing with as well. So anyway, starting late, but better, better late, better now, better late than never. Um, so the reason I chose artist as my, as my word is when I was a child, 
Um, I loved making art. I drew all the time. I crafted, you know, I used to, the, the biggest memory I have is I used to make these little like um, ghosts out of tissue <laughs> and I would hang them from my ceiling during Halloween. And I would, you know, like the, the paper chains and I, you know, it's just constantly making things. Um, loved, I didn't have art classes in elementary back, you know, back then that wasn't very common, but I definitely did not have art class in elementary. Um, didn't have art class until middle school. I loved my middle school and high school art classes. But somewhere along the way, I discovered art history, which I went, I went to a Europe trip when I was in high school. And I grew up in Amarillo, Texas. We, we didn't have, you know, the biggest city, closest big city was five or six hours away. We didn't go to art museums. I didn't ever see art by other people. It wasn't really a part of my art curriculum, looking at art by other people. So once I discovered art by other people, I was totally hooked because I um, was so emotionally moved by it. Um, and I got that through Disney movies. I would I watched Lion King 12 times at the movie theater when I was in the eighth grade. It was I had lived around the corner from a dollar theater. <laughs> we would just go over and over, me and my best friend Jeannie, who I went to Universal Studios, studios with, we would um, constantly be going to the dollar movie. And, <clears throat> You know, I would cry every time during Circle of Life. I was so moved by it that I decided I wanted to be a Disney animator and I would like learn about all the animators and and then um, discovered art history, discovered like museums and kind of fell in love with that. And that kind of became my path. And then during my college education, I was getting an art, my art history degree and I had to take art classes for um, studio art classes, you know, the 3D one, 3D. You know, 2D, 3D, the drawing one, drawing two. Well, I have no memory of taking drawing two. I remember it was required, but I really, I don't remember actually having taken it, which is really interesting. I know I took another studio art class when I was um, studying study abroad. So maybe that counted as my fourth credit. I don't know. Or I just took it and completely blocked it out. That's completely possible too. I have a terrible memory. So, you know, I, I learned in high school and I learned in college that I do have, you know, some level of natural ability. I do have an eye for things. I, I, I can draw well. I can look at the, something and draw it. You know, like I, I can do, I have it like above, above average, ten, like natural talent for art, right? But there were these people in my classes. I remember one of them very particularly in high school. I won't call his name out, but he is a working artist today, which is really cool. Um, but I haven't Googled him in a long time. So I have to go to that later. But anyway, he was so talented. And I was like, I can never do that. I was like, I can never, like, I can't even imagine a world what I could ever draw like he did and have that sort of natural ability. And he would make these oil paintings that were just, um, just incredible, you know? And I was just, I felt so less than. I felt like I couldn't do it. And then I went into college and, um, took my drawing class, drawing one, and I loved it. Uh, you know, it's like those, those four hours, you just, you go in and then you spend four hours just in your world drawing. I was like, come out completely covered like a coal miner. <laughs> I was like covered in charcoal and uh, it was so fun. And I just, I, I felt like um, it was such a like Zen peaceful thing to do, which just sit there and draw for that long period of time. And the problem was is that you know we i didn't feel like i ever could get better at it like i felt like yes okay i have a good eye for proportion i can do that like proportion i've got um but when it came to making like the modeling techniques and the shading like i just never i never felt like i could get beyond like the level that i thought i should be able to get to and it was kind of cemented when my um, drawing teacher, you know, we had our like end of semester review or whatever, and we'd pick our couple best drawings and we'd put them out there and and we were out in the hall and, and he would do it, it would do like a one on one critique with us, basically. And he told me um, that I was the hardest working, most committed student in the class. Um, and I was proud of that because I did. I worked really hard. I, I I knew that I wasn't as good. I knew I knew that like there was something that I couldn't figure out. Um, but I like I was like, yeah, he recognizes my effort. But then I got a B, and then I just <laughs> and 
I didn't get bees. Okay. <laughs> bees were not something I got. I, I didn't like, I did get lower grades than bees eventually, but like at that time in my life, like a bee was not a good thing to get because I'm a perfectionist and I just have to be the best at everything. Right. So this is something that I can't be the best at. So, okay. Well, I guess I'm not good enough to be an artist. Um, I realized that I wasn't, there was something about this thought that I had to have the right amount of ideas uh, or the good, good ideas. And then I not only had to have a really good idea, really deep meaning for the art, but then I had to be able to implement that idea in an ex exemplary way. And somewhere I, my young self <laughs> missed the, missed the message that there's other ways to do that, that, that you don't have to have the idea to start, that you can be about the process and you can arrive at the meeting later and that it's about experimentation and play and taking risk and like all this stuff. Like those art classes that I took were so driven by um, technique and by being good at drawing, being good, in, good at painting, like all of this stuff that like, I didn't feel like my version of what art could being an artist could be was an acceptable thing um, in the world. And I didn't see it necessarily, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be a career. I couldn't, I knew I wasn't good enough to be like a career artist, but in my head, that's what, like, if you're going to be an artist, that's what you, that's what you are. And you, you're not an artist if you're like just painting on the side. So it's, it's not true and it's not it's a lot of like things old stories that I made up that aren't true um but they got in my brain and they stuck there right and so then I started teaching I started working in art museums and then I eventually started teaching I taught community college art appreciation and then I moved into like k-12 education I was teaching art and even then I felt like Yes, I could come up with a project. I could make a really good example. I could make the great, great posters for the classrooms. I could, you know, for the pep rally or the, I had to make a state testing inspirational pep rally posters once. Um, you know, I was all good at that. Like, I, you know, it was just one of those like, okay, yes, I have above average good ability. Um, but it, it just, being an artist was over here and I, you know, it was up here. I was down here and it was never something that I could ever claim as something I am. And even though like even in my twenties, I would paint, you know, I, I created a kind of studio space in my house and um, I was painting and uh, even then it never felt like I was an artist. It was just kind of like I was painting. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't make sense. Um, but I, I've learned that then after working with art teachers since 2014, I've been running, you know, art class curator. And I have learned that I have a lot of um, judgment of myself when I'm making art around other art teachers. I feel like oh, I'm not good enough. They're going to see how bad I am. They're going to know. Like there's all, you know, there's just all of that gross, like inner criticism stuff and so I would avoid like go I go to conferences and I would have like the national art education I'd avoid any art making ones because I was like no that's not my place I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go there because they're gonna see how terrible I am at making art this year I actually signed up for one of the art making ones so I was kind of excited it's part of my um thing so um I I um Okay, let me get myself back on track. Okay, so I would be around art teachers and then I would feel um, like not good enough. But I have since learned, since kind of talking about this, that a lot of other art teachers feel the same way. They feel like they are less than, they feel like they are not connected with themselves as artists. If there's something about, um, I think the closeness of who, how we are to, to art 
and what we see as possible with art. You know, we look at, we study these great artists and we learn about them and we, we have these deep connections with their art that it's hard for us to imagine that we too can be artists of that caliber, you know, that are, are worth worthy artists, right? So all of this baggage is going in my head that I eventually just kind of stopped making art uh, altogether. I, you know, would do things here and there, but it wasn't something I really did regularly. And I really never had a really full blown art practice um, as an adult, you know, in my 20s, like I said, I painted, but it wasn't ever that regular, maybe a few months, you know, at a time. So all this to say, I have dedicated my life to studying art, um, looking at art, connecting with it, helping other people do that, helping um, art teachers lead powerful discussions about works of art with their students, um, coming up with lessons and activities, really like, while I couldn't call myself an artist, I know, and I always have known that I am like, I'm a I'm a really good art teacher, you know, I'm a really good teacher. And I really like my connection to art, my passion for art is what's special. And like the way that I connect with art is something different. And so, you know, I really leaned into that. And um, so I'm, I'm leaning into that. I, I start to think about like what would happen if I don't work with teachers, if I work, I still work with teachers, but like I, I branch out and, and bring my type of looking at art to other people. So I'm exploring this, this thought. And then I was, it was um, last December, 2021. So about a year ago, I was kind of thinking through December is a month for me where I feel really like, I don't know, intuitive, like I feel really creative. Like I've always December is just a lot of those times where it's just like, there's something in the air in December for me. So I was, um, I think I was in a, a session with Yola, who, if you listen to the podcast, she was on the podcast um, in December. So go back and listen to that if you want to learn more about Yola. She's brilliant. I was in a session with Yola, or I was having a conversation with Yola on Voxer, one of the two. And I had this sort of lightning bolt download of a moment that was like, you need to make art. And it was what was not expected. <laughs> I was very taken aback by it. Um, I was very resistant to the thought that that is something I should do. And I immediately it was like, no, I can't know. I can't do that. I can't be an artist. Because of course, my initial thought was, oh, you have to make more art. You have to be an artist. You have to make money from art. They're like, eventually it became this like thing where it's like, immediately I have to be an artist. that's like showing in museums. Like it was like, there was no, it was a very black or white type of thing, which is the thing I constantly am um, working on in my head, like uh, black or white thinking. So I came down from like freaking out about this idea. Um, I had a random idea for a painting for one of my friends. I made her a painting. It was really exciting. And then I decided, well, that that moment of download felt so true. It felt so um, real and, and um, necessary. You, and, and the fact that I resisted so much to it, even though it felt so true, I was like, I knew I was on to something here. I knew that th there was something in there for me and that that really was like the thing I should do. Um, so I didn't just immediately start making art. Well, I did, I made that one painting for my friend. Um, and then I spent a good six months processing like what that means. <laughs> I didn't actually jump into doing it at all, which is interesting because I'm very much an action. When I get those sort of downloads, like I act fast, but there I had a lot of resistance to get through. Um, so I first decided, like I was reading The Artist's Way for a little bit. I didn't get very far into that, but I did, I was reading that. I was kind of uh, imagining myself making art. I was 
uh, you know, when I would look at art and I go to museums, I would be inspired to make art after. So like there was something happening and then, but I didn't really have a space in my house. So, you know, I was like, I was dealing with all the, all that resistance. Like there was a lot to work through emotionally, psychologically, energetically, like there was a lot going on there. Um, and so I eventually created a new art space. Um, we have a, a second living room. Um, upstairs and the my kids just use it to play minecraft like there's a computer in there that's the only thing that happens in that room uh that they have a computer desk in there so i was like well we need to turn this space into the studio space like they can still play minecraft but then we're gonna you know bring in some art tables and um storage and supplies and make this into our creating space for our family so i did that it took took several months to do that. I finished that in like July. And then I still wasn't, <laughs> still wasn't making any art in there. I was like, okay, I've got it made. Then I, but I was like, well, what kind of art am I even going to make? I thought I had to do paintings. Um, and then I um, thought that was the only thing I could do. I was like, well, I just got to paint. Um, but then I eventually came to, I was like, well, what, what are my main issues here? And one of them is that I felt like everything had to be good. I felt I have this issue where if I start something, I have to finish it. Um, I had to get kind of through, get through that and figure out how to navigate that. I have to finish it in one sitting. Uh, I'm, I'm like that. If I'm in the middle of something, like it is really hard to get me to, to stop it. Um, and writing my book has really helped that process um, because you can't write a whole book in one sitting. Uh, and then, so I ultimately was like, I need to be able to, oh, I also needed to be able to like distract from that, like, uh, it has to have uh, an idea to start and it has to be a fleshed out, fully formed idea before you even make it. So there was like all this stuff that I kind of had to work through. And I realized that creating an art journal was the, the way that I could really explore my process, figure out what my process is and figure out what my style is even, figure out what I like to make, figure out like, you know, I hadn't made art in probably 15 years, you know, besides in my classroom. Like I never really just made art for me in such a long time, but I didn't know what it, what it was gonna be like. So I figured an art journal was a really safe way to do that because you could use any supply, you could just, you know, play. Um, of course, I thought I'd be terrible at it. So I was just going in like thinking, oh, yeah, it's just all going to be crap and whatever. So I had to get through all that inner critic stuff. Oh, so many, so many, so much baggage here. So then um, this is a very long story to get to the point. But I feel like because I'm going to be doing these weekly updates that I provide some full context. Um, and then uh still wasn't making art, but I decided, okay, the type of art I was going to make. So then I had to like, okay, I got to get the supplies for that. So I got like a what I already had a whole lot of supplies, but then I like got a, you know, a picked a, picked out a bunch more based on some like a supply lists I found online for art journaling. And then, um, still, still wasn't doing it. Uh, and so I was launching my art connection circle for the, um, fall. And I decided, well, we're going to have to force myself to do it. Because one thing I did learn this year, or last year, was that I um, joined a writing group in April, or May, end of April, early May. And we meet every, every day, every weekday, for an hour. And I made a commitment when I joined that I would go every day, unless I couldn't, like unless there was just you know, a dentist appointment that only could be scheduled at that time, you know, something like that. But um, I made that commitment that I would show up whether I felt like it or not, I would show up, I would I would schedule around it, I would make that my top priority of every day that it wouldn't be ever a non negotiable thing. Um, and so I did. And then what I learned in that process is that every day is different as, as a writer, you know, writing an artist or so similar. And you can learn a lot about that in the podcast I did with Heather Doyle Frazier, who runs the writing group that I'm in. And um, we had a great conversation about this. Um, 
in that episode. But what I learned is that the brilliance of art and the brilliance of writing isn't just when you feel like it, isn't just when you have those light, lightning bolt moments where everything is suddenly clear and it makes sense and then you go do it and it's brilliant, that it is a practice and it is a daily, um, it's, a, it's a commitment to fostering that creativity and fostering that, that practice. So what I learned when I started writing regularly was that my brain knew I was writing regularly. Like up until I started the writing group, it would be like, I'd write here and there. I'd write when I'd feel like it. So my brain never really fully clicked on with what I'm writing and, and, and connected with the content, connected with the project as a whole, because I wasn't in it enough on a more on a consistent basis to get my subconscious involved. And so once I started going regularly, so my subconscious was like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're thinking about. This is what we're toiling with. This is what we're working through. This is what we're navigating right now. And so suddenly um, connections were being made that I, um, in the rest of my life, that um, were, um, connected. So like, here's an example uh, of what just happened this week. So I am in part one, writing my book, or part, or I finished part one. I've written a lot of part three too. Um, hold on, my phone's ringing. This might mess up my, okay. Um, okay. So, so I was starting part two and I, I was kind of confused with where part two starts and where it ends and, and what really is the journey of part two. Even I know it was like the last five years. <laughs> it's kind of like the time frame, or really the last, you know, five years minus the last year, that last year's more part three. But anyway, um, but I couldn't really grasp it. So I was working on it. I'm, I'm, I'm making lists. I'm taping up the artworks on my wall. You might've seen that Facebook post. I'm, you know, there's all this stuff going on. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I basically was trying to figure out the story, figuring out where my starting point was at part two and where I ended up and, and then what needs to be talked about in each one. I already had an outline, but like there's something missing. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going about my life and then I'm reading a book and it's not related to anything <laughs> about this, but I'm reading, um, remarkably bright creatures by, something Van Pelt, Shannon, Shelby, Shelby, uh, I think. And um, no spoilers, I'm finished, but <laughs> I'm 50% in. Um, but in the book, the main character works at an aquarium and she was, it was like the first couple chapters and she was like uh, walking past the shark tank. And then she mentioned something about how sharks never like can't stop swimming or they suffocate basically. And I was like, oh, that's fascinating. You know, I highlighted that. And then I'm like, and then there was a line that says, I understand what it's like to um, never slow down unless you stop to breathe or you, I, don't, I put the quote on my book, but I don't remember, but you'll stop, stop breathing. And I was like, oh, I relate to that. That makes total sense. <laughs> like I, I have been there where I was constantly working, you know, 24 hours, I'm working two jobs. I'm, I'm building my business while working full time, while having two small kids. Like, you know, like I, I, I all I lived that life where I was constantly moving because I was like trying. But if I slowed it down, it would be like discomfort. It would be that's when anxiety would creep in. So if I kept moving, I could keep those negative negative emotions away. So like I saw that comment, I was like, oh yes, um, that's really good. And you know, I was like I relate to that, but I didn't like put it in the book. But then later I was writing the book, and then I was like, oh, the sharks came in. Like I started to think about the sharks, and I was like, oh great. So I started writing about the sharks. And then uh, put the quote in and then I'm like, wait a minute, this whole chapter I'm writing, there's no artwork. The artwork that I'm supposed to be including this chapter isn't fitting anymore. Now that I'm kind of talking, I kind of figured out it was burnout. So then I started to write about burnout. And then I ended up putting the sharks in. And then the sharks, I was like, you know what? I bet if there's a cool shark artwork. And then I looked up and I was like, the Jaws poster is perfect for the burnout. And so I was like, all these little threads of connection. And then, um, 
And then I was also listening to a coaching call. I'm in a, another group called Joyful Marketing and I was listening to the group coaching call recording and she was talking all about um, something in education and how, you know, we're taught to look for answers outside of ourselves, which was a whole part of that oh. chapter too. So like that became then put in the book. So it's like the fact that I am currently thinking about working through that problem in my book has heightened my senses in my entire life you know like i'm i'm seeing themes in books i'm seeing you know uh, comments on tv shows conversations are bubbling up where i'm like oh, yes you know like that that are related I'm, I'm 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 connecting dots that um feel so synchronous it feels so um magical when really i all i know i mean i can believe it's magical too and i i do sometimes do <laughs> believe it's magical but i also believe that it's my subconscious that that's turned on that's clicked on and it's looking for the answer even when i'm not actively writing um and it, that happens all the time like when i was writing um i was talking about my childhood and i was talking about um kind of trying to understand another like my mom's perspective on something and then i happened to be at a retreat where there were two women who went through similar situations to my mom as so I got to talk to them about it. I was like, it, it was just like, you know, like life then starts to like piece itself together. That creative process is really about um, exposing yourself to new ideas and inspiration and connection. And, and um, it's really such an exciting process. And so I saw the magic of that happening when writing my book. I saw how the book was getting more soulful, more connected, and I felt more connected to it through that daily practice that I knew that I had to make that, I don't know if you heard that, my dog just made a big groan. Um, that's Bruno back there. Yeah. Do you see him? No, I don't know which way to go. No, you can't see him. Um, he's behind me. Um, sorry, I got totally distracted. Oh, yeah. So I had to create that environment for my art making that I knew I had to make it a non-negotiable. I had to make it something I was committed to. And I'm not good with commitment. I'm not good with consistency. Uh, I'm saying I'm going to do these every week, but I'm like, oh, gosh, am I really going to do that? But it won't be at the same time every week. It might not be every Tuesday. It just happens to be today is Tuesday. Next week, it might be Wednesday. Um, so what I did was I was, so I was, like I said, I was enrolling the Art Connection Circle and I decided I'm going to build this in to the Art Connection Circle every Sunday as part of the circle, we will have an art making co-working session. So I had to be there every Sunday because it was my program. <laughs> there was going to be people there that were expecting me there. And what we were going to do is just sit and make art together. That's all we had to do. And so I did that. One, because I do think that the people in the program would benefit from it. I do think that art teachers in general, you know, most of the people um, who I uh, talk to on you know this page and on um, my email list, and most of those people are teachers. And I know that most of those people are, um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm like, oh, I've been talking a long time. Uh, I'm doing better than I thought I would be doing with the COVID, but, um... But then I distracted myself again. So then I was thinking about that cough that I have to do. Oh yeah. So I figured that they would be, they would um, benefit from it too. So it was like for them too, but really it was like, this is gonna make me do it. And the same thing that happened with writing practice happened with my art making. Um, once it became a regular thing, it became um, something my brain would work on. I would see a catalog with an image in it. And I'd be like, oh, I love that image. I want to save that for my, for my art journal. Or um, I would, uh, you know, like the, there was constantly like the, the, I am actively creating art on a regular basis. And so my brain was actively looking for those connections. And then I started to realize like see the connections between my writing and my art making. I started to see the connections with how I look at art versus how I make art, that they're really 
so similar. I did another Facebook Live about that that you can um, um, find. I'll, I'll try to link to it in the show notes if I remember. Show notes, Facebook Live. Um, I write it on a note card, and I have thousands of these note cards, so we'll see if I see the note card. But anyway, comment if I don't do it. Um, so I started to make these connections. And I started to realize all of the benefits of what it was doing for me. Um, I was starting to realize that if I had a headache, when I was at my art table, my headache went away. That if I was feeling anxious that day, and I do have anxiety and it you know, kind of comes and goes, it's mostly well maintained or you know, managed, but like it does creep in. And if I had anxiety that day, I did not feel it when I was making the art. Um, I started to crave it. I started to um, put it first, you know, like if, if there was a choice of getting stuff done around the house or going to my art table, I would choose the art table. And, and, and you know, things didn't have to be perfect in the house for me to then allow myself to do it. So like all of this stuff is happening because I made that weekly commitment. And then when it ended in December, the Art Connection Circle ended December 15th, and I was like, uh, so many of the members of the group, the ones that came regularly, were noticing those same things for themselves. They were like, this started my week off right. It gave me something for me. It really connected with me, with why I am why I am an art teacher to begin with. You know, there's all these beautiful things that were happening just with that commitment. And then also there's the whole, being with other people who are doing it too, which is another magical component too. So then like the program ended and then Christmas happened and I kind of stopped because I didn't have that commitment. I would go up there every now and then, but not as not as regularly. And then um, that's why I created the creativity cocoon because I'm like, I need like, I need to force myself to do it. <laughs> so if I create a program and force myself to do it. I will do it. And I like the benefits are amazing. So, um, all of that to say, you know, I started to, to make art. I started to really enjoy it. I started to really like what I was making and feeling like it was, it was good and it represented me and I was able to take risks and play and have fun and figure out the way I like to make art is not like what I thought, you know, I don't ever really start with an idea. I just start playing <laughs> and that is how I am in all parts of life like I am very spontaneous I don't follow recipes when I cook I like being I never make chili the same way twice and you know it's just that's how I am with a lot of things and so why did I think that art had to be this one rigid way um you know the things we make up <laughs> the things that are implanted in us from our um our our societies and our educations and our upbringings and our um, patriarchy, patri white supremacist patriarchal structures, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so when I was pondering what my word of the year is, see how I made it, how long did I make into this video before I start talking about the word of the year? Is I'm, I'm a good 36 minutes, <laughs> they had 36 minutes in here. Um, I thought this would be a good 20, but I think they'll be shorter in the future, but you know, we're just going to let my full storytelling abilities go because I can be a little bit wordy when telling a story and give a little bit too much detail, but that's fine. Um, what is too much? Um, okay. So when I was trying to think of my word of the year, I knew that it had to be something about creating that I had gone through kind of a period of burnout with, um, kind of business minded things. <laughs> and then I pulled out of that into more heart centered, soul centered connection to the art and really leaned into that. And that feels so good. And it feels so right. And it feels so meaningful. Um, I moved away from sort of mass mass marketing to more like intimate connections and, and fostering those. And that feels really wonderful and juicy and perfect. Um, so I knew that it was 
that it was continuing on this vein. I knew that I have this book that I'm finishing that will come out this year and that I needed to create, you know, there was a lot of creative energy. Um, but I also knew that like the, the journey in the fall making art was just the beginning and that there's so much more I need to explore about myself, um, about myself as, as a creator. And so I was thinking of the word create. I'm like, no, I mean, I've been creating things forever. <laughs> like I create lessons, I create businesses, I create whatever programs. I'm, I'm, I'm creating a lot. That's, that's it's my natural state is to be creating. But in December, I finally was like, oh, I'm a writer. Like it just kind of clicked like, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize. I didn't realize I've been writing a book for the last eight months or whatever daily and like didn't realize I was a writer. And then um, I saw a post by Simone Soul. She's a marketing person. She's the one I was watching the coaching call of. But she posted the things. She was like, what if you don't call your business a business? What if you call it a community art project or a, you know, she had a list of things. And then I'm like, oh, that, that was really juicy. That was really fascinating. And then I'm like, well, what if what I'm doing is not a business? What if what if it's art? What if my entire life is an expression of me as an artist and that all of it, the books I read, the food I make, the conversations I have, the trips I take, you know, everything. What if all of that is... Hold on one sec. This is a reminder. Pick up the girls from school. This is a reminder. Pick up the girls from school. <laughs> That's my daily 315 alarm. I don't have to pick up the girls from school because they're here because they have COVID. So we're good. Um, <laughs> excuse, I should have thought I should have uh, turned that off, but that's too much to remember. Um, what was I saying? I'm going to get there. Oh, yeah. What if everything is a create? What if everything is? me being an artist, but if I'm an artist already and that I have, and, and why can't I call myself that? Even though like if I call like a student, I would be like, of course you're an artist. <laughs> there was someone in the program in the, in the fall who was like, I don't I make kind of outsider art. And she had this baggage about academia and she was like having a hard time calling herself an artist. And, and I was like, I, I, I could very easily say, of course you're an artist, of course you're an artist. But like me, no. I'm not, you know, even though my whole career has been creating things, you know. Um, so it feels really good to think about what my life and my business and my soul and my connections and my family and my relationships. Like, what if all of that was through this new lens and what's possible? if I look at everything through that lens. And so that is what I'm gonna do in 2023. And I know what's, you know, I know those connections are gonna happen. You know, I, I know, you know, like the, the story about the, the shark and the book and, and all of that, like it, that's just an example of what is, is going to be possible as I continue to think about this. And every week I hope to bring a new theme or an idea or an insight that I'm grappling with or an observation I've made and how that um, can relate to this concept of my word of the year. And I will be back to talk about that. I would love to hear your thoughts on what, how um, you relate to the term artist. Um, your insights about anything that I shared today. Do you have a similar experience? Do you not? Um, I'd love to hear about that. Um, if you're interested in committing to a daily or to a regular art making practice, we do have the creativity cocoon that I would love to invite you to. We can have these conversations in person twice a week. Um, what a lovely group of people. We just started this week and um, they're so, they're wonderful. So it was, it was a really delightful experience. Um, artandself.com slash cocoon if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for more about my word of the year. Thank you for listening. If you made it this far into my long rambling story, I appreciate you and I appreciate that, that you 
stuck with me through that long thing. Um, and I'm going to go drink some water and uh, get this cough out that I've been holding in for this long. So thank you very much for watching. I will uh, be back next week. Thank you so much for listening to Art and Self. And if you loved what you heard, please consider leaving me a rating or a review on iTunes and share this episode with one friend who you know needs to hear what we talked about today. You will find links to the artworks that we discuss over at the show notes at artandself.com. And you can also join my email list to get notified of all of the new upcoming episodes. The videos of these episodes are also available over on YouTube at Art and Self. And you can also follow me on social media on Instagram at Art and Self and on Facebook at Art and Self Cindy. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time.